Hey guys, hey guys it's, it's the Doll place. place. And today we decided that, you know what, we were just gonna chill out, max, relax, all cool, and do a Q&A. We asked you guys to give us questions. We asked you guys to give us some questions on our Instagram so that we could answer, answer them. <laughs> so that's what a question and answer video is. So without further ado, let's get right into the questions. So the first question comes from Atlantic underscore AG, and she asks, "What was the hardest photo you did for AG and DM?" Um, I would definitely say that they were all difficult because you know I only had a week. We only had a week to do like the photos. I definitely there was a lot of struggle with um Disney Week because there was dolls on flying carpets falling off, and they were actually like on a stick held up and. It was windy, and the giant Alice in Wonderland flowers kept falling over. Dolls kept falling over because there was, I think, six dolls, maybe even seven out there, just like in that photo as the characters and I, stuff. I feel like you know, AG and DM was just this whole period of time of a slow mental breakdown. But I distinctly remember um, that Disney photo just being a turning point for the worst <laughs> mentally wise. Yeah, because like, it was really windy out. There's a real there's a real breakdown at that moment. The next question is from AG World underscore sprinkles and she asks AG tube or AGIG. And I feel like these are two separate things. Two yeah. For two separate They're good for separate things. Like the thing with AG tube is I feel like it's really good just to make like bigger projects first of all and also just to like really I don't know, be stupid. Yeah, be funny, put our dumb opinions about, like, girl of the years and stuff, and, like, yeah, so make I, our series that's, like, you know. So I feel like that's what AGTube is really good, but for, and then, like, a con of AGTube is the fact that I feel like you can't be as connected to people. Which, like, you, I didn't really, I mean, when they had, like, group chats and stuff, it was better, but, like, um, I mean, you can still obviously communicate with people very easily, but... It's so much easier when you are on Instagram to just, like, literally DM, like, Mixie Pixie or something, like. Yeah, so that, in, in that regards, AGIG is, like, more personal as far as, like, connections go, but then, like. It's more serious. You're actually, your photo, your photography and all that is, like, super serious and, like, taken, really. It's just photos. It's. Right. Whereas, like, AGTube, you can have, like, fun with the video. I don't know. And so it's, like, different different strengths, different weaknesses. But I like them both, and I'm glad to be a part of both of them. Lauren Aspen AG asks, are, what is our dream gaudy doll? Um, um, I want a new face mold, but, like, not in the way that Joss was done. I want something more extremely different, like Nea was. Like, she still looks like an American girl, but she wasn't just kind of like an offspring of the Josefina mold. It's kind of like... Yeah. You know, I just I just want a different, different face mold. And as far as her character... I want American Girl to recognize that they don't have to do two hobbies. Yeah. I would like the American... The, Gaudy to be like extremely interested in one thing and just like more hardship. Like, I know that sounds terrible, but, but like when you see like Krista and stuff, like that's the juicy stuff. Yeah, we want the juice. We want the juice. And like, <laughs> like honestly, like I've said before, I think that like American Girl, what something that they could do that would be cool is like take stories from actual girls in the US. I don't know. I feel like that would add something. And I feel like that would be a lawsuit. Also, I want to see like a girl of the year that maybe comes from another country and moves into America. Um, which I think they've already kind of done with, I, I don't know, but you, you know, something different because we've been getting the same kind of thing. Alley Cat Loves AG asks, which sister gets better grades? Um, now, first of all, both of us get super good grades, like, mm -hmm. not to brag, but we're both, like, really good at school. I will say that I take college classes. So, I don't know. Uh, I mean, she she takes her community college classes. I don't. And I'm in high school, so. But, but like, we still both but have we, straight A's. Yeah, we both have straight A's, so does it really? It, and it's not like one's stupid. It's like. We're both smart. It's just I don't go to community college. I just do stuff here. <laughs> okay, AG13 Cervantes. Sorry if we pronounced so, that I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> ask how are you guys so good at time management example making big sets during school I feel like the biggest thing is 
well, well, a lesson that I think we took away from doing AG and DM during school was that it's not, like, sustainable. Like, you can do it for a month. You can make these crazy sets, like, every week for a month. But at a certain point, it just gets to be too much and it's too overwhelming. So I think the biggest tip is to really, like, space out your sets. And don't be afraid to put, like, normal normal photos in between. Because, I don't know, first of all, like, it gets you better at photography. Just doing normal photos, like, it teaches you a lot about lighting and angles and all that stuff. Which for, will help when you make a huge set and then take a picture. For example, we have been wanting to go back and recreate um, some Cinderella photos, some Snow White photos, um, some Sleeping Beauty photos, and um, Hercules photos. And we have, like, a Hercules set half-built, but, like... Given the circumstances right now, I'm not really able to go out and look at fabric for to make dresses and don't really have the time to do that. Um, so, you, you know, like, it's okay to take, like, a, even however long this break is to kind of just upload, I mean, to, to post some normal photos. I just feel like, just don't be so hard on yourself and, like... Like, the H2O set took over four months to create and it was just kind of, like, little pieces. Yeah, so I don't think you need a hard deadline. Like, AG and DM gave us a hard deadline, but I really don't think you need one. And sometimes I think the end result works better if you give yourself that time to really focus and give, like, undivided attention to a set. And as far as, like, managing it, like, um, I mean, we're homeschooled, so I kind of just, like, did all my school for that week at once and then got into the set. Um, but yeah, if you're in public school, like, I do, like, half public school technically. There's always an hour or two during your day where you could be doing, you know, when you are doing nothing. So, I don't know. Just gotta save it for dolls. I don't know. <laughs> Next question. Caitlin underscore Grace 11 asks, if you were in H2O, what would your name be and what would your power be? Okay. Well, for me, my name would be Paige. <laughs> <laughs> you can't choose Paige. That's... Ooh, why would I change my name? Okay, fine. I would be Paige. Um, and I would be living in, um, the Gold Coast of Australia, and my power would be all of the powers, so I would be able to control water, to freeze water, to boil water, and to, um, cure water into a hard substance, along with having powers over weather, lightning, um, <coughs> snow, those kind of things, you know. Okay. Um, but her... Here's the deal. <laughs> my name is Victoria... Roslyn Emeline Grace Burke, and I'm the new girl in town. And everybody thinks I'm slightly mysterious because I wear all black, but I have this mysterious glowing necklace around my neck. And um, one day when I'm at the water fountain, my hands are full of like textbooks. So instead of, you know, doing that, I just use my little hand and then make a little shapey thing. And I control the water, and the water from the water fountain goes straight into my mouth, so I can control water. But I do it for good. Like, um, I give water to the poor people. Yep. <laughs> Next question. Which, which, by the way, I'm making an H2O tale right now. Not, not, for, not for dolls, for myself, who's made of silicone. Ooh. But, like, we're not going to get into that, kids. Me and my dolls. Dot ag ask what slash who inspires you the most. Um, if you talk about photography, I feel like or our sets in general, I feel like we get a lot of our inspiration from the stuff that we watch. Disney, like, is, I mean, if you haven't noticed, like after ag and dm, everything was us creating Disney stuff, which like we still haven't haven't been able to do like we want to do a photo for every single moment in disney but like it's impossible that's why like don't put that pressure on yourself brother because like yeah, brother. it's hard to take like 50 photos with giant sets especially in disney there's crazy sets and stuff but we do have them planned yeah but i feel like in general it's just stuff that we're like interested in at the time i mean i love lady of shalot so that's where that came from um h2o of course yeah we just had to make that uh, you know Water. And, I mean, like, during AG and DM, it, it was, like... It was just things that we... Our, uh, ourself. Yeah, ourself. Because we're geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Brooklyn Doll Designs asks, Have you always made big sets before AG and DM? Yes and no, but mostly no. Well, we did make sets for our series. Yes. But not to a drastic, as drastic of an extent. And it's, like... 
always something we've been interested in. Well, as far as like recreations go, because you can like I don't know, you can scroll. There back. wasn't much time between um when we first got an Instagram and when we got an AG and DM. So that's hard to say, but like yeah, before you, Instagram, we did take pictures, obviously. We and just... you can and you can look back, but the thing is, um, instead of doing sets, we would edit in sets. Now we're a lot. You know, it's kind of... That our, was, like, a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long like, time I don't ago. like editing stuff in. Yeah, now we're just kind of... Make it. We're anti-editing, <laughs> pretty much. But you know what? I think a lot of people are really good at editing. It's just... I don't know. It's a preference. Next question. Let's go back to Atlantic underscore AG. She, uh, they asked... Are you going to audition for AG and DM again? Given the no. fact that we won cycle four, I don't think that you can really audition again. There other therefore I don't see a reason to audition again if you won. Like, okay. I don't know how controversial we want to get here. Well, if I won, I don't wanna win again. Like then. Yeah, I don't know how controversial we wanna get here. But I feel like it's sort of wrong in a way that if you got into the top three that you if you auditioned again I think that's kind of wrong because I think there's a lot of great um photographers just waiting for an opportunity like this and I feel like I don't know we already had our moment and I don't want to take it away from and you we won so like you can't do that yeah we already had our moment and I don't want to take it away from someone who you know who's also deserving of having that moment so I don't know but like, in the same way, um, people who kind of have grown in photography or just maybe were up against some other people that, like, you know, at the time were doing better than them deserve a second chance. Like, like you see, like, Ali Catlow's AG came from cycle one to cycle five, which is, like, and she ended up winning. So, like, obviously there's improvement over the years and, like... But I feel like an important thing with that situation is that she didn't make it all the way to, like, the finale... So, I don't know. I feel like it's weird if you got into the finale. Because, I mean, getting into the top three is almost like winning. I mean, you get a prize at that point, and people know, like, your name in the competition. Of course, it isn't first place, so I can understand, but, like, I would definitely give others a chance. The next question comes from Lolly underscore dolls, who asks, What is our least favorite photo shoot that we've ever posted? And this is actually, like, an um, I had, like, an immediate, re like, choice for this. I don't know why, but it's just something that really sticks out, like, a thor sore thumb on our, um... We don't take it off, though, because it represents our progress over it. Yeah, so we're not, like, one to archive photos. I know that a lot of people do, and it makes them feel better, but I like seeing the progress, personally, like, looking back at it. And it's now, really interesting. the thing is, before this, we used to take photos just out in the mountains, like out in the parks and stuff and like they would just look normal kind of not great there's nothing special to them mm -hmm. but we started getting interested in like getting bokeh leaves in the background so we tried to kind of edit that and it made it look really bad because it wasn't real yeah um so that's what was wrong with these photos but we did end up getting a canon camera after that because we realized we really needed that to get what we wanted these are all from the rose garden that we um that is really close to us, and we take a bunch of pictures at. You can compare it to like our most recent pictures from the from that rose garden, and you can just see like a vast improvement. And I think that's cool. One was without our fancy camera, and the other was us trying to and, create that effect. And I feel like more than that, like we just gotten better at angles and lighting and everything like that. Yeah, because so, they're kind of boring photos too. There you go. The next question comes from ag underscore is underscore the underscore way underscore to underscore go when did you start collecting ag brand dolls so this is complicated take it back tell to what year was he even Kanani was really 2011 good. we saw a brief amount of ag mm -hmm. now keep in mind before 2010 i knew these dolls existed but like i didn't know that they were any different from any barbie doll like rather yeah. than their size i didn't know they had stories so the way that they were introduced, like, fully into our world is I had a group of ballet friends, and each and every girl in that ballet group had an American girl, and I didn't, and, um, I didn't really feel left off because they let me, like, play with their dolls and stuff, and that's when I really, like, fell in love with American girls. On my end, um, I learned about the dolls, um, my friends read their books, 
and I would I never really made the connection between that being the doll and then mm-hmm. the characters. I thought those were kind of two separate things, not even both American Girl. I just yeah. I don't know. I saw some. I thought it was a book series, and then I saw the watch the Chris Stand Strong movie so many times in our um, rainy day recesses at our cafeteria that in High School Musical. But like, so I knew that there were, there was these stories titled American Girl and some American Girl dolls, but I never put two and two together and saw them as like them being characters and things but yeah so 2011 was the year that we both collectively like gained interest in American Girl dolls like we'd flip through the catalogs and we watched the movies with like the movies read the books like all of this stuff and it was that end of that year at Christmas when one of the ballet girls said that she had a friend who was outgrowing her dolls and was wondering if we'd like to have one of her dolls and of course we said yes so, and that is how we got Marisol. Which was the girl of the year 2005. So that was incredible. We we are so lucky to have her because she is now 15 years old. Yeah, it's crazy to think about it. But um, yeah, she was our first doll. And then it would be another... Let's see, when did we come Then out? we got a lot of Our Generation dolls to go... In between. Uh, yeah. Our Generations, Heart for Heart dolls. Um, we and the, crazy. First, the first time we got new American Girl dolls, like, in the box and everything... Was going was... to Disneyland in 2013 with our grandmother. Yeah, um, and, she... and she surprised us by letting us each get pick a, out our own doll. From AGLA. So those were our first dolls. And then from there, every year... 2014, 15, 16, they just kept coming, birthdays and stuff, and Christmas money, so. Yeah, we're very grateful. The next question is from Chicken Biscuit AG, who asks, favorite thing about AG ID? And one of the main things is honestly that you can just post photos without making a long photo shoot video. Yeah, there's that. Where it's just like a slideshow. I like that it gives you a place to put photos, first of all, but obviously that's not the main thing. I think the main thing is, yes, there is drama on AGIG, like, a lot more than there ever was on AGTube. There is, like, a sense of, like, um, support and, um... Exactly. Like, everyone's so nice Everyone's to really nice, it's for the most part. The same vibe that you get from AGTube comes to AGIG, but it's honestly... But you're closer. You can get closer. You can get closer, because, like, it's hard to have a full-on conversation and get to know someone and, like, talk about like laugh and have fun at night and stuff but you know this is all cheesy but, but i'm sorry but i'm saying like it's hard to do you can't do that with the comment section on youtube like they used to have a group chat which was great and it was like right after they deleted that that we kind of went to agig because we wanted to kind of like still be able to talk to certain people about collabs and things like that and um you know we just never really had to put any thought into it so we kind of like, why didn't we join sooner? <laughs> yeah, but mostly I, I just like, and I also just really enjoy seeing everybody's creativity. It's like amazing what you guys, everyone can do. Like, I don't think people think about this enough, but you're literally taking a picture of an object that has five points of articulation. And make, you and guys make such incredible stuff. It's such a difficult thing to do, and I think there's so much creativity there, so it's a very and cool it, place to be. And it's crazy to see, like, um, just how many people support each other. Like, you see all these crazy people with, like, 30,000 subscribe, I mean, 30,000 followers, and they'll just, like, like your photo and comment. Like, that's just, like, amazing to me that they'll just come over here and support you. The next question comes from Odd LPS Lover, who asks, favorite Disney or Nickelodeon show? Um, I have a, a couple. Nickelodeon is a lot easier to pick. For me, personally, I just was never a Nickelodeon girl Well, myself. I mean, I watched a lot of Nickelodeon. I watched a lot of Nick. I was just never it's a Nick just, girl. Exactly. Um, Off of Nickelodeon, obviously, I like Spongebob because... Right, so if we're not counting... Well, I guess we're, we're counting that. Okay. Spongebob and then probably iCarly. Or Victorious. Um, and then H2O, if you count that. It doesn't count. It does count in some way. H2O is, like, my favorite show, but, like... That's not really... As far as Disney Channel goes, I think it changes every once in a while, but Kim um, Possible will always have Kim a Possible. special place Kim in Possible my is part. hilarious. It's... And it reminds me of the good old days when we would tie yarn in the backyard to jump over laser beams. It was just a grand old time. And, yeah, like, I literally had my father try to... I asked him a lot of questions about grappling hooks and like stuff. Like, at one point, we asked we were, we were gonna make a, a platform in their tree. To jump off of... We were gonna make a stitch in time, we guys. We were out. we had the original live action plan. The Wizards of Waverly Place. Either Wizards of Waverly Place or Good Luck Charlie has a special place in my heart. And Anna Montana. Right. Um, I I did like Jesse. I loved all. Disney. I like Jesse. I, I liked all Disney I channels. I like Shake It Up, which is like. Yeah. I liked all Disney Channel shows, but there was just those 
you know, like four that stick out. Okay, the next question comes from Melody AG19 and a whole bunch of other people who ask, are you guys going to do a best and worst of Truly Me or Contemporary Dolls? We will definitely yes. do the contemporary characters. Um, We're we trying to figure out the logistics of how we would do a best and worst of Truly Me. Like, are like, we going to have the best, best of the blondes? The best of the blondes. The I honestly think we redness. are. I think we will. And we're also going to do best and worst of the best friends. Okay, so Grace underscore AG underscore life asks, in your photos, how do you get your doll's hair to fly? And we've gotten so many questions about this. And about posing and stuff. And about posing and the... Okay, so it started when we got Lightroom and I wanted to take a photo of Janelle mm -hmm. with her hair blowing dramatically. Mm -hmm. In this particular photo, I just used the wheat kind of, I don't even know what plant it was, and I kind of just, lavender. lavender, and I just laid her hair, kind of pulled the last piece and let it kind of stretch out, and then I just laid it on top. So then when I got into more photos later, I started thinking about that again, and I started using just some thin floral wire, and I kind of just made a loop around a piece, and then would kind of weave it in and out and pull it and then attach it to like a tree, a stick in the ground. If you guys want your dolls to do crazy unnatural things, the key is wire. Wire is your best friend. If you Wire are, and then skewers if you want if your you dolls to be remember, walking weird. If you guys remember the back to school picture from AG and DM, that is all wire. Next question is from Sunshine Studios who ask, what is our favorite Gotti movie. Let's let's talk, kids. We have some, like, mixed opinions The here. thing is that they didn't make it for the earlier Gotties, and then they aren't making it past um, Leah, which is really weird. And I, truth be told, I am 100% a, a historical movie kind of gal. Like, AG movie kind of okay, gal. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this straight up. I don't like the Grace movie. I don't like the Isabel movie. It's like, they're all kind of just stupid like, like they feel dumb the leah one was bad. better it was bad it was better but it was not even her story it was like an ep Kanani epilogue didn't get a movie Kanani didn't get a movie like n none of them got a movie sage's movie sucked like Sage was that girl wearing a wig i don't know was she wearing a, i don't know it's don't know. it was stupid like them dancing and uh, it's just cringy but okay but here's the thing you get back to the like og the, the good old days the two, the only two, <laughs> the only two that were good, McKenna. McKenna's movie is actually really, really good. I have watched McKenna's movie over 15 times. Does it deserve an Oscar? Absolutely. Like, I, I watched that one and I enjoy it. Like, with the girl in the wheelchair, like, it's it's a good story. She It makes her, it's like, I don't like her her book. I don't, I never really paid attention to her books. never paid attention to her. I didn't really like McKenna that much. Um, but I loved her movie. I remember watching it. But Chrissa. Chrissa, I've seen that movie so many stankin' times because they played it at school so much. And it's just, like, so iconic. I I can't even. So, yeah. McKenna and Chrissa. Definitely Chrissa, though. Okay, so the next question is from Alley Cat Loves AG, who asks, least favorite part about taking your crazy photos? Um, definitely feeling like there's like a time constraint still because I we still kind of have that deep in our mind kind of have that AG and DM mindset like I you can't unsee it we've definitely gotten out of that because it took us four months for our H2O photo. I would say that and sort of like um getting everything in place especially when you're doing like a side-by-side -side recreation just making sure that the angle and stuff like that all that can be a little frustrating. And I just remember like an AG and DM if like something didn't fit into frame and I made something too big I'd like freak out that like she was too small and I like everything was made wrong and you know it's just it's a matter of like you know it but in the end it really is fun. The next question is from Melody HE19 who asks, Who is your favorite historical character and Gaudi? And honestly, honey, okay, it's guys, so much easier to say our least favorite. Because we love them all so much. It's just Well, we love the ones that we love. We love so the much. ones that we love, so it's easier to say the ones that we dislike. Now, when you get into the um good old Gaudis here, our least favorite is without a doubt one hundred percent. It's a tie it, between Grace and Blair. And honestly, no offense to anyone who has Grace and Blair. This is completely our preference. Blair has grown on me on her um, 
looks and Grace has grown on me on her story but they both are lacking so much. The next question comes from Miss Lolly underscore dolls who asks who's the funnier sister and honestly listen we were thinking about this long and hard and I, as much as I would love to go out here and say I am for sure the number one funniest sister if you isolated us by yourself, if you were stuck in the room with each of us individually, you would think we were both stupid. <laughs> like, the way, the, well, we sound stupid together too, but our stupidity works together on such, like, a way. It's like, like we have, like, stupidity, like, like if Kylie, if Kylie was just making these best and worst videos by herself, it would be different. She needs me to be here for her to just, like, say dumb things about Marie Grace and stuff. It takes two to tango. It really does. And like like these stupidity. random these random songs we create, it 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 has to come off of like our our little and like like just imagine what's what's that word? Our our telepathy. Our core, we have like our we have soul. like yeah, our soul. Just like just imagine like radio waves of yeah. stupidity. Like my stupidity is like at the same frequency as her stupidity. And our stupidity just like goes out into the air and it comes like hits each other and then it radiates back. It's like into, a harmony. And then it radiates take, back into us. We're kind of like professional singers. And we're, we're kind of like professionals. All my life I've always wanted to have one day for myself. I'm realizing that every present comes with strings. Now I fear I'll never be. Soon I will forever be free. <laughs> Duty means doing the things your heart may well regret. Me alone, two voices, one song. Put me in the space between, where two worlds come to me. training yeah so what we're saying like in all of my intensive training i can tell you that the, the key thing to music is harmony and we have a beautiful harmony so one song put that in your pipe and pop eye to the morning so yeah there's a bunch of other questions but to be honest like we've been filming this for 50 minutes and it's just getting ridiculous at this point, but we do really appreciate everyone who submitted a question, and who knows? And it's 11 p.m. Yeah, maybe one day when we're in, in quarantine for, like, well, like, our stupidity, like number two. When our stu stupidity radiates, um... In just the right way, on, on a full moon. Yep. Um, on, I don't know, werewolf day. <laughs> I don't know. And... We are hungry like the wolves. We will return to those questions that you asked and give you our answers. Absolutely. And if you have more questions, put them down below, babies, because like we'd love to answer your questions, little girls and like boys and And until then, stay sassy and classy. Bye. Bye.